In this moment, it doesn't matter if you save money in 15 minutes or if your neighbor has the same insurance that you do. What matters right now is the quality of your independent insurance agent and the company that stands behind them. Auto Owners Insurance. Bennett Bennett and Johnson Insurance Agency in Alma is your local independent auto owners insurance agency. As long as it goes. Welcome to week six of the uh, Red Raider Coaches Show. I'm your host, Joe Hayes, and here with me is our head coach, uh, Keith Goss. And Coach, uh, we're coming from a new venue tonight. We're here at uh, uh, Femin Live at uh, Roadrunners, one of our big sponsors, and uh, they do so much for a lot of our athletic programs. I know they do for basketball and have for uh, other sports as well, but big contributors to our football program, so we wanted to come out here tonight and get them a little recognition and coach they uh, you and I we may we may walk, yeah. walk away here they, uh, uh, a little they heavier plenty, plenty to eat out here tonight. that's right so they have church's chicken and if you have not been out here to try this chicken some very very good uh, spicy I, I like their uh, I like the chicken breast and their potato wedges and these biscuits coach oh my goodness I don't know what that honey glaze is but it is like Honey sugar. That's all I know on top of a very, very good biscuit. So uh, you want to get out here and try out their chicken with Church's Chicken. They also have Godfather's Pizza, uh, which is a very good pizza. And we feed the football players this quite often. Uh, it's, it's a great pizza. They, they do a great job and, and, and help us out, get it to us after games. And it's, it's pretty dang tasty. And the players love it. So They uh, do love it. Coaches they, do too. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, I've seen a coach or two going home with a whole pizza, you know, after after well, I mean, we don't we don't want to let it no, sit around. No, that's there, right. <laughs> but anyway, we do want to thank Roadrunners for uh, being one of our um, bronze sponsors uh, with the Bacon County Touchdown Club. And speaking of our sponsors, I want to get some others a little recognition. Our platinum sponsors, which is our largest sponsors, you'll see their logos down on the field. We want to thank Bacon County Hospital and Health System, Industrial Forge. Blueberry Plantation Inn and Country Club, and Parker's Food Mart. Those guys, they are always uh, above and beyond and our biggest contributors to Bacon County football. And um, Raider Nation, we want you to get around and let those guys know how much we appreciate their support. Absolutely. They do a lot to help us um, do what we're trying to accomplish here. And uh, we really appreciate their support and, and you supporting them. Absolutely, and I want to run through these gold sponsors real quick. Uh, Alma Telephone Company, Titan Modular, Daniel and Cassie Moore, Larry Waters Properties, Pineland Bank, State Farm, F&B South, Andy Cawthorn Auto Sales, Clean Air and Electric, uh, Burt CPAs, Southside Church of God, and Lasseter Tractor Company. Another. Uh, a bunch of companies that are big contributors to our program and, and we definitely want to get them recognition as well and every week we'll try to throw in some new ones and and get some of our other sponsors recognition also but coach you know everybody comes in here and they mainly they want to talk football they want to hear football so um, you know let's get on to it all right so we drive over to Hazelhurst Friday night and uh, had a long delay we had to kind of sit and wait hurry up and wait yeah uh you know i think we we finally took the field about 9 45 kickoff was right around 10 o'clock um you know obviously that's that's a little bit of change for for our guys um but you know what you gotta you gotta handle the situation adjust to it and uh, try to get out there and play yeah well coach we um we didn't come up with a win we had a very tough fault game jeff davis they have gradually been growing uh, the past, I would say, three seasons since their coach uh, has been involved in those that program, and it's, you know, we have seen them get closer and closer to the gap, you know, with us, with what they're doing and what their booster clubs are doing, what they're doing in the weight room and, and things of that nature, so uh, they have been on an upward climb, and uh, and they gave us a hard-fought football game. I mean, they, they come prepared and uh, they executed pretty well. Um, you know, their, their coaching staff does a good job. Um, they're well coached. You can tell that 
they've put a couple years into the weight room. Uh, they're a little bit ahead of us, you know, as far as strength at this point, and it and it showed in the game. I, I thought our guys played hard. Uh, we came out and we were able to drive down and, and score on our first drive. I had a little momentum going. Um, you know, I knew the, the longer it went on, where we, we didn't take advantage of, of some some momentum, uh, the harder it was going to be with us, you know, for us to stay. With it. So we, uh, you know, we took some calculated risks, and after our first score, we went with a surprise onside kick. Um, my feeling was that, you know, we pooched the ball, and it usually ends up at the 30 or 35. Uh, if we onside kicked, it ended up, you know, we didn't get it, it ended up at the 45. We gave up 10 yards uh, field position, but we, we had an opportunity to recover the football. And so I, I felt like that, that 10 yards difference was worth an opportunity to get the ball back. And, uh, you know, it didn't turn out that way. You know, they recovered the surprise onside. Um, that kid did a good job staying home. Um, obviously on film, it's something we felt like we could take advantage of, um, but the kid made that play that night. Yep. And it's, you know, and that's at any level, Coach, when you take that risk. And, you know, I've seen it in some of the NFL games today, and it just, you know, sometimes you win it, sometimes you don't. But if you don't roll the dice, you, you don't have that chance at all. So That's right. Uh, Sometimes you got to roll it and just go with it, and like you said, try to build that momentum. You know, another calculated risk that I felt like you took offensively there in the first half was uh, it was late in the second quarter. I think we were it was either 21 to uh, seven or 27, may have been 27 to seven, and uh, it was I fell fourth like, down, yep. and, and it was maybe fourth and what. Yard. And a yard. And uh, you decided felt, to go for it. I felt like it was it was starting to get away from us, um, and that you know we were going to take a shot at it. Um, we didn't execute. They did a great job of, of getting up the field. Usually we, we feel like we can we can push it and get a yard um, if we're coming off doing the right things. And on that play we did, and we went over film with the guys tonight uh, about our execution on, on that play and, and several others. Um, and that's you know that's not what we're looking for. Uh, obviously, you know we had prepared for that situation, and we had you know repped a, a goal line package for that situation. And uh, obviously, I felt confident in running it, or we just would have punted it away. Um, but it, it didn't work out. Um, we did turn over the ball there. It did not turn into points on that drive. I believe our defense held, or they missed a field goal. Uh, so. It didn't hurt us uh, on the scoreboard, but you know sometimes when you when you feel like you got to do something to try to create some momentum, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna have to take shots, and and I did, and uh, that's part of the decision making of the job. Not everybody's gonna agree with it, not everybody's uh, gonna like it, but uh, I'm not gonna sit there and not do anything. You know when it when you have to take a shot or try to do something to create momentum or swing in the game. And you're not happy the way things going. Um, you got to try to make something happen. And uh, you know our defense did a good job of getting them off the field in the situation I put them in as the head coach. And you know, and for that part, it worked out. Coach, on the offensive side of the ball, the duration of the game, we had a lot of positive games. I don't, I don't know what our total yards were, but like you said, first series we drive the field put seven on the board and then uh, JD takes possession, they drive, score on us. And then after that, it was a little difficult. They started kind of adjusting to what we were doing and it seemed like, you know, up the middle type of things, we, we struggled. Um, they, they were really jamming us hard up front, our offensive line. Uh, outside, you know, on the perimeters, we got a few where we'd break the corner, do there, and we had a few uh, pass plays again some of that dis disruption up front was not giving our quarterback enough time to, Correct. you know, make good reads and make a good pass. So uh, he's several times he's pulling it in and having to make plays with his feet. What, you know, is your feeling on that? Are we, have you seen an improvement from two weeks ago to Today, I, I think what happened in, in the course of the game is, is some of our best guys on the offensive front are also some of our best guys on the defensive front. And uh, you know, in our meeting tonight, we talked about how to 
how to try to make adjustments with getting more guys on the field. And we may play some other younger guys. Um, you know, we've, we've made an effort coming out of this meeting to, to create 22 starters. Because, um, I'll give you an example, your son. He's been doing a great job for us. Uh, we've had to start him on both sides of the ball. When I put in the, the freshman tied in and we, we played him in the second half, um, you know, Walt was a little fresher and came up and made a lot a, a lot better plays forcing, forcing the corner because he's not exhausted. Yeah. And we have to do that and, and make an effort and not be scared to put some younger guys out there um, because over the, the course of the game, um, we have to be we have to be able to to hold up over the course of the game. And when we're playing so many guys both ways, um, we're wearing down. So that's something we've addressed in our meeting this week, and we've tried to create 22 starters. And if those young men step up, we'll have 22 starters. Good deal, Coach. Um, any other moments on the offensive side of the ball ball that you know? you felt went very well and, you know, that were some really good moments? Um, you know, obviously I, I wasn't happy with our pass protection. Um, but, you know, things like on the uh, the jet sweep where Brunson scores the touchdown, yes. um, um, obviously that was that was a good moment. Then we did some good things with the power read. And, um, you know, there, there's, some, there's some moments in there. You can tell that the kids are trying hard. Um, we're just we're physically we've got to continue to get stronger. Uh, you know we have five seniors. Um, we played against a team last night that had a heck of a lot more. Yeah. Or Friday night. Um, that's frustrating. That's frustrating when we're trying to trying to build it. I know it's frustrating for the fans. It's frustrating for our players, and it's frustrating for our coaching staff. Um, but there is no magic pill. There is no magic pill. We got to we got to continue to get up. We got to continue to work hard. We got to continue to, to grow in the weight room. Uh, in our open week, we maxed. Um, had several guys continuing to, to get stronger. Uh, had three more guys join the, the Red Raider Club, which is over 800 pounds on three lifts. Um, so we are we are going in the right direction. Now, I know it's hard for people to see sometimes when they look at the score, and you know we're not where we want to be. Um, I'm not happy with it. I know the fan base isn't happy with it. None of the players aren't happy with it. Um, but I know we're doing the right things to build this program and take it where we want to be. And will we get there, Coach? Do you see a lot at the end of the tunnel? Oh, absolutely. We got we got a lot of young guys playing. Um, there's five or six freshmen right now. They're getting considerable amount of varsity time. There's going to be five or six sophomores going to get considerable amount of varsity time, um, if not starting. When you play that many young guys, you might take your lumps this year. You won't take your lumps forever. Yeah. And that's and that's where we're at right now. Uh, we're going to continue to build it. We're going to continue to encourage the kids. We're going to go in there and we're going to work hard on a game plan. And we're going to try to find a way to win. The defensive side of the ball, I, you know, Coach Ragel, he's our defensive coordinator. I feel like he's doing a good job. Um, you know, he's putting some good packages out there for our players, and we've struggled each game consistently with holding on, making tackles. You know, I did see a little improvements in this game, uh, but it's tough when, you, when you're when facing someone like Jeff Davis and they're just pounding, 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 and they, they're getting two yards and three yards and four yards. And, That's right. You know, and that comes back to down front. Like you said, a lot of our offensive and defensive line players are, are going both ways, and, and guys are just wearing down. They're, they're wore out. Um, and like I said, we, we made an effort to uh, – we have some guys that we've been – you know, we, we're about halfway through the season with them and guys that have been going through the drills and, and we're going to give an opportunity to step up and play more on the offensive side of the ball and defensive side of the ball. We're going to move around some of the young guys. And the effort tonight going into the meeting was, you know, those guys that have been playing both ways, they still have to back up. We don't have enough depth for, for them not to work both yeah. sides. Um, but we're making an effort to, to start everybody just one way instead of having to start people both ways and, and we're going to carry that philosophy into this week and try to create more guys with more playing experience. And if it doesn't pan out for us right away, it will pan out for us down the line because we'll have more guys that have played Friday Night Football.
That's good, Coach, and that's what I like to hear. Well, Coach, we'll take a real quick break, and uh, we'll get our sponsors a little recognition, and Raider Nation will be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the Red Raider Coaches Show. Um, I'm your host, Joe Hayes, and still here with our head coach, Keith Goss. Coach, a uh, little bit of a prop went missing <laughs> during the break. <laughs> yeah, uh, some of the some of the props got hit up there. <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. <laughs> no, it was too good to just let it sit here. and uh, We didn't it, want to go to waste. No, we didn't no. want to let it go to waste. And, and I made a mistake, and Coach called me off on it. They're chicken. Uh, I thought it was called Church's Chicken. It's actually Crispy Crunchy Chicken. Cajun recipe, so uh, very, very good chicken, I might add, and that that's going to be the next prop. That, that's the that's next going, prop that's going missing. Yeah, <laughs> that and them biscuits, absolutely. So, um, Coach, real quick, um, I want to run through some of our bronze sponsors uh, real fast. I want to thank Outback Entertainment, Gopher Southern Cooking and Barbecue, Chrissy's Creations, Kim Anderson and Dr. Galay, Satilla Rheumatology and Internal Medicine, Cohen's of Alma, Chuck and Pam Vonier, RSB Forestry, Alma Police Department, F&B South, Scott Pools, MGN Detailing, Southern Sand, Axel Surgeon, Dairy Queen, Ideal Cleaners, Southeast Propane, Boatwright Trucking, Alma Auto Sure, Satilla River Tees, Orthopedic Surgeons of Georgia, um, CRH Oncology Group and CRH Cardiology Group. Big list there, Coach. We're so proud to have them guys as our bronze sponsors and, and what they mean to us. And, and also, like I said, Roadrunners is another one of our uh, bronze sponsors here. So we, we're so thankful for what these guys do to our program. Coach, in the first half, you know, I, I think we talked enough about Jeff Davis. Um, we got to move on. We got another game ahead of us this week. We've got to face Toombs County. Um, you know, they're another program that's had a new coach in position. Uh, they had a little gain last year. Looking for them to have another little gain this year. You know, from what you guys looked at film review yesterday and today, what can we expect uh, from Toombs County coming to Bacon County uh, Friday night? Uh, defensively, uh you know, they tried to disguise some things a little bit, but they're, they're more of a, more or less a 3-4 base. Um, they play either a cover four or, or what we call two read, which will play cover two to the field, and basically cover four to the boundary. Um, that'll just say they like to play two safeties high and four guys. Uh, so defensively, um, they'll try to present a couple different looks and uh, try to move some guys around and then you know they're gonna they're gonna be strong up front and you know be a little bit multiple in the looks they give you uh, when they <clears throat> when they get tired of uh, that look they'll jump into a, another look where they got two guys down and they stand up two defensive ends and kind of give you a four-man look um, but the coverage behind it's still two safeties high and so uh, so they'll try to mess with your front a little bit um, you know making those adjustments yeah. Um, offensively, uh, they're a little more spread than they used to be. Um, I think they, they've started to go spread. Now they'll still run the ball a good bit, but uh, you know they've, they've done a little more shotgun than maybe they traditionally had done in the past when I've seen them. Yeah. Um, so they've opened up their offense a little more. I think their offense coordinator came from Portal, and uh, you know he's at least that's what one of my coaches and staff yeah. knows and told me, and that. They're going to open up and, and move the ball around a little bit more spread. And they, 
they've got a pretty good quarterback. You know, last year, um, you know, there wasn't a lot about him, a lot of talk or hype about him. But now when I saw him, when we played them last year, he impressed me. He actually made some really good throws. Um, he was very good with his feet and moving around and coming out of the pocket and, uh, you know, and getting away from any disruptions up front and, and making a play doing so on the run. And, you know, I, I don't know if that had anything of having that quarterback and having more confidence in him, or maybe why they went to a spread style as well. That's quite possible. Um, you know, he's – from what I've watched of, um, of him so far, he's, he's a good high school quarterback yeah. and uh, you know talented kid. So you know, obviously, we're, we're game plan to try to try to keep him you know boxed in. Traditionally, Troom or Tombs, you know, in the past with that just run, run, run. Most of the games that we've had against them were, you know, we had one one year seven to six that you know we came out the victor in that game and. You know, it's been 14 to seven or 21 to seven, or uh, there's not a lot of big gaps there. But with them going to a spread, that generally tends to put a little more action on the scoreboard. Sometimes. Sometimes I, I would say they they uh, they are, are very stingy. They're still a, a defensive mindset team. Uh, I think they've only given up in you know, four games. They've only given up uh, 45 points. Okay. Um, and offensively, I think they, they've scored 90. Uh, so it's it's not like they're scoring 40 points every night. Yeah. Um, you know, they they sit there. It's still a, a very much a ball control style of offense. Um, you know, they're not trying to win in the shootout. They're trying to possess possess the ball and and still eat clock and, yeah. and, and not leave their defense out there. Just because you say spread doesn't necessarily mean that it's a team chunking it all over yeah. the yard. It's it's kind of a generic term, um, but you can have a, still have a ball control style offense being a spread team. Absolutely. And and I feel like that is you know that's their identity from watching them on the film. I got you. Well, coach, it's uh, it's a big week for us. We've got homecoming this week. Um, we've got a homecoming parade this week. I think the homecoming parade is um, Wednesday. We're traditionally we're used to. Thursday, um, not sure why, but they they changed the date to Wednesday at six or six thirty, uh, Brent, for the six thirty. So six thirty, uh, we'll start at the elementary school and it'll go to uh, Goldwasher Park and uh, where it'll end. So definitely want to get out and support the community in that. I can enlighten you on the why. Okay. Um, our girls softball team, who's second uh, in the region, will be playing for the, for the region title more than likely on Thursday. And uh, so Coach Gay came to me and says, is there any way that it could be worked out to you know, move the parade? Um, obviously, because he has, I think, five girls on the softball team that, that wanted to be a part of the parade and obviously wanted to play softball yeah. in, in hopes of winning a region title. Um, so I, I talked with him about it. I talked with Miss Martin about it, and I told him, um, talked to them about it, how what we would need to do to be off the field in that amount of time. Right. And um, you know, everybody worked together to, to try to make it happen. So um, the young ladies on the softball team can can play in the game and be a part of the parade, which is you know very important to them and in, in their high school experience. And so um, you know, we all tried to work together to find the best answer. I got you. So we'll do that on Wednesday, 6.30 is when the parade will start. And then uh, we'll have a pep rally on Friday uh, during school. So that, that's going to be pretty exciting. This will be your first pep rally at Bacon County, that's right? right? It'll be my first experience with the uh, Bacon County pep rally. Well, um, you got any big plans up your, up your sleeve for the pep rally? You gonna you got a big speech prepared? I mean, I mean <laughs> you'll just have to see come, come time. I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it out now. I hear I you, did. I hear you. Well, um, I, I know it's uh, it's an exciting time in the community. My daughter, um, you know, they went tonight. They were, they dress in different outfits, you know, every single day of the week, and there's themes. And um, I think one of the days is like '80s TV shows or whatever. Right. So, you know, I think that's good because she's coming to me, Daddy. What was a good TV show during <laughs> the '80s? And you know that type of stuff. So it gets the whole community involved and. Um, 
I know for a coach, it's usually not that light. <laughs> Well, just because of the distractions that happen all during the week, so yeah, I mean, there's there's distractions, but uh, it's part of the high school experience, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a great thing overall. Um, it's our job to focus on the game as football coaches and players. Um, well, you know, what a fun time for the, for the rest of the school. Um, you know, we need to focus on our end on doing our job and giving us the best opportunity to win the game on Friday night. Um, but you know, it's it's a fun time to be had um, for the student body. It's it's you know fun for the teachers. It's fun for the community, and it's it's great to see everybody out there on a Friday night supporting uh, you know our young men. You know, going after a win. Yeah. Well, it'll be here at home Raider Nation on Friday night. We face Tombs County. We want to all show up. You know, come out support who will be the homecoming queen and homecoming king. Uh, so we want to come out and support that, and we also want to come out and support Red Raider football. Um, you know, bring everybody you can. Come on out. We're going to need all the help we can against Toombs County. Um, if you want to stop by the Raider trailer, don't forget about them. Get in there and get you some Raider gear. Um, you can even and, say a uh, happy birthday to my son. It'll be his ninth birthday. On there Friday you go. Yeah, well, I know he will be excited. I'm sure I'll have to let him shoot the shirt can in a time I'm, or two. I'm sure that, you will. That'll be his birthday present. And he'll love it. <laughs> And uh, Saturday is homecoming. I think our cheerleaders, they have a competition on Saturday in Vidalia. So uh, they're going to have a very busy day, uh, our competition cheerleaders. And uh, we, we definitely want to remember them and keeping uh, the whole uh, competition cheerleader family uh, in our thoughts and prayers. And, uh, you know, it, it's been pretty difficult times this week, and, and we do want to remember them. Uh, our whole community, if, if you'll just continue to pray for them, and it will be uh, much appreciated. And, uh, and then when they return uh, from Bidea, we'll have uh, homecoming Saturday night. So I you know everybody's excited, the community's excited, and um, you know it's a good time for our kids and a good experience for them. And Coach, again, we appreciate everything that you've done, what your coaching staff are doing, and continuing to do. And you know, you know, we know that you guys are grinding it out down there and working hard and, and I know I see it any of you Raider Nation that um, would like to see or like to know there's ways that you can come in you can be around coach or you can come after school and watch practice see what the coaches are doing stand down there make your own observations and see how Absolutely. hard they're pushing them and um, you're more anybody's more than welcome to come down and stand at the fence and, and watch practice going on uh, inside the, the practice facility there and um, we have touchdown club meetings usually on Thursdays we can announce them if you'll shoot me a message I'll make sure that we send out a reminder to you to let you know when we have touchdown club meetings you're always at the touchdown club meetings and I don't miss one if I and, can help uh, <laughs> you're always welcome to come watch us uh, on set for the coaches show so um, another you know way to come out and meet coach and uh, ask him questions and Again, Raider Nation, we appreciate you guys. We appreciate all that you do. And, uh, Coach, uh, look for a safe week this week. And uh, one last question I forgot to ask. Are we 100% healthy coming in to – is anybody banged up that may not play? Uh, you know, at this point, uh, there's you know, there's a few guys with little nicks and bangs, but that's that's football. Season. Okay. So, uh, for the most part, we're, we're for pretty healthy. For the most part, I think we're pretty healthy. Well, that's good to hear. So, Raider Nation, you heard it. Um, we should have most everybody playing Friday night. We want to come out and support it, and we'll see you all there. Go Red Raiders.